Welcome to Sunday Visit. I'm your host, Delisa Lander, giving you a first pew view of what could possibly be a new church home for you. Today, I'm at Shiloh Baptist Church, located on Scoville and 55th Avenue, where Reverend Corey Jenkins is pastor. Now, if you'd like to go in with me to the house of the Lord, we'll see what Shiloh Baptist Church has for you. We understand that's a tough pill to swallow, but every once in a while, God wants to know which is greater in our lives, our love for God or the love for the blessings that come from God. After we've received that long-awaited blessing, that which we fasted and prayed for years to, to receive, is our love and devotion to God ever outmatched by our attachment to his blessings. Because it's one thing, it's one thing to trust God while you're waiting, while you're waiting for the breakthrough, yet it's something else altogether to take God at his word concerning the blessing after it's been received. Yet the blessing is once we are walking with God, once we remember that God is the only VIP that really matters in the world, then just like in Abraham's case, we can walk in the midst of the test because we know who we're walking with and we know who's walking with us. Abraham could testify that God is faithful to fulfill his promises, but how in the world could he keep so calm? How could he quickly obey what the Lord was asking of him because he rested on God's promises? God said, through Isaac, I will make you a great nation. Through Isaac, I will number your descendants as many as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand by the shore. So Abraham is saying, if God was faithful to give me Isaac, then God is faithful to fulfill the promises he declared would come through Isaac. Some questions have entered somebody's mind. Somebody's worried today about whether or not you'll be able to hold on to the blessing you've already received. Somebody's worried because you've been tested by circumstance and tried by situations. And you're wondering if the grasp of your faith is strong enough to hold on. And all Abraham's example is showing us is that if God has shown himself able to give you the blessing, he's certainly able to work out your situation that you may keep the blessing. All God is looking for is the evidence in your life that your devotion belongs to God and not to the blessing itself. It may sound crazy, but it's what can happen when that new relationship that you prayed for begins to substitute your time with God. It can happen when the benefits of that new retirement lifestyle can get so good to you that you forget that it was God who kept you all along. So in order to keep from being victimized by spiritual amnesia, God is sharing through us through this passage that he's more than the provider of blessings, but he asks us to continue to walk by faith after we've received the blessing with our ears hearkened to the word of God. Abraham had to walk with his blessing Isaac, but in order to make the right decisions as it related to the blessing, he had to keep his ears focused on the word of God. A critical mistake that so many believers make is that right when we need to hear from God the most, rather than make sure we're tuned into Holy Ghost radio, we flip to another station. When God's instructions are not to our liking, many would rather tune in to popular politics or the court of public opinion to hear the he said, she said of the community grapevine. Some would rather tune God out altogether only to hear what we want to hear. But the reality is there are major consequences when God's directives for our lives are ignored. And as Abraham shows up, the chief consequence in ignoring God's directions is that we miss out on the opportunity to witness God's power 
to provide. Family, think about what would have happened, what could have happened if you would have said no to the Lord, if you would have turned your back on his promise for your life. Abraham already made that mistake when he felt God was taking too long to send Isaac through Sarah, he jumped the gun and received Ishmael through Hagar. Well, pastor, how do we do it? Why would God expect us to demonstrate our trust about things we've waited so long to receive? Why would he tease us with blessings knowing he would take them right back? And Abraham family is the prime example that for those who are committed to walk with God by faith, God calls us to live by promises and not explanations. Isaac was Abraham's promise. He was the gift of God to Abraham and Sarah in response to their faith. They built their entire future around Isaac because he represented God's promise in, in their lives. When we live our lives on promises, we take what God says and act accordingly. We heard the word and we do. We trust his word and we apply it. Rarely, if ever, does God sit down at our dinner tables and spell out all the details. No, for those willing to walk with God, he's in the business of testing our faith through various trials. Isaac says to his father, the fire and wood are here, but where is the lamb for the offering? The fire and wood are here, but where is God's provision? In other words, Daddy, we've come up the mountain based on God's word. How is he going to make good now on his word? It's the question some of us ask when we do our best to move by faith, yet as we move, we wonder, Lord, how in the world are you going to work this thing out? I've heard you say one thing, but there seems to be something missing. What type of servant would best fit at Shiloh about this? One who is, above all else, committed to Christ. Yeah. Um, I, I think in many instances we encounter those within the church who are about serving the church, which is important, yeah. uh, but beneath that surface uh, must be a, a heartfelt commitment to Christ and in that commitment a desire to reflect a Christ-like ministry. Yes. Uh, so to answer your question, we would att attract a Shango, the person who would fit best at Shango, let's say, uh, is one who, is, who has a desire to serve. Yes. Uh, knowing that the church is not just about form and fashion on Sundays wearing a suit or wearing a hat per se, but it's about having a heart to serve the people of God, and more specifically, uh, the least of these, uh, the least among our people. So, right, do unto these. Absolutely. Yes. Now, speaking of serving, what type of missions work do you have at Shiloh Baptist? Uh, currently, we have a, a food bank that we do every month. Uh, we also do some service with a few uh, women's shelters in the community. We do try to facilitate partnerships with uh, various agencies uh, around Shango, uh, one of which is uh, the Youth for Christ program, which is actually uh, run out of East Tech High School. Okay. Um, so we are very active with that. And we're also just looking for some additional opportunities where we, whereby we can uh, do more community service. Now, when I um, attended the Sunday visit um, at Shiloh, um, you were giving away um, a whole bunch of um, scholarships. Yes. Can you talk about that a little bit in the recipients of, of those awards? Sure. Uh, every year uh, we have a, a scholarship program. Uh, well, throughout the year we, we raise money for our scholarship fund and in June of every year around Father's Day, um, for those graduates specifically who are graduating from high school uh, yes. on their way to college um, as the village around them uh, we want to support them as they pursue excellence in the in uh, in college mm -hmm. so we, we like try to assist our students and even for those students who are in college uh, we try to give them a, a book allowance or just various things that will help them 
as they move along. So you're definitely supporting the youth in their education. Absolutely. Yes. Well, um, can you tell um, our visitors how to contact you or Shiloh Baptist Church? Sure. Um, we're on the web. So our website is shilohcleveland.org. And our telephone number, if you, if the visitors or viewers would like that, is 216-881-7337. Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much, Reverend Corey Jenkins of Shiloh Baptist Church. Thank you. Thank you for coming on Sunday visit, and hopefully you'll get to visit Shiloh Baptist Church. Now, here's some Sunday visit information just for you. We pray that this episode of Sunday Visit has been a blessing for you to find your new church home. If you would like more information on the church we just visited, contact us at sundayvisit at villagetv.org or Facebook or Twitter, keywords Sunday Visit. Attention all pastors, would you like your church to receive a Sunday visit or is your church broadcast ministry ready to go to the next level? Consider airing on Village Television. Village TV has competitive air rate packages exclusively for Christian broadcasting. Please contact us at www.sundayvisit at villagetv.org. If you would like to order this episode of Sunday Visit, please send a check or money order for $10 and the displayed product code to Village Television Care of Sunday Visit, 3615 Superior Avenue, Suite 4203, Cleveland, Ohio. Shipping and handling is included in the price. So get your Bible and join us next time for the Sunday visit. God bless you.